Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. I figured I'd mix it up a bit and bring you guys a bit of a different video. I decided to play from the front tees at my home golf course, Crofton Country Club, and see how low I could go. If you guys would like to see more of this, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. It is greatly appreciated. Also, Follow me on Instagram as well. I post almost daily on there, and a lot of those videos are fun challenges and other really cool and entertaining pieces of content, such as 350-yard iron shots, highlights of my long drive events, golf vlogs, and trick shots of many different varieties that I'm sure you guys would enjoy watching. So that being said, let's hop into it. So this is actually something I have been doing quite a bit. I'm basically trying to train myself to go very low, because as you guys know, a very important part about playing good golf is you, you can't have a governor on your scoring game. You get to one under, you need to be trying to get to two under. If you get to two under, you need to be trying to get to three under. And a lot of the times when I was a junior golfer, I would struggle with shooting very, very low scores. My big thing that I was known for was I never shot bad scores. I had a two and a half year stretch on the AJGA Polar Rankings where I didn't have a single score in the 80s. However, I only had one round in the 60s, and that is what really killed me and kept me from being ranked higher. I just wasn't able to f win tournaments. I would finish in the top 20, top 10 almost every time, but it was very tough for me to take it deep. And so this is a very great tool for anyone, really, to get used to shooting better than they were. And it'll make you much more comfortable with your improvement process, because as you start hitting better shots... As you start becoming a better golfer, you will start to push those boundaries of what your mind thinks is possible with regards to scoring. And when you're comfortable being very far under par, you're going to be able to achieve your potential when you're on a, when you have a hot round. So I made a really pretty good birdie the first hole, hit a great iron shot, and not the best putt, but still made a birdie. And two very very mediocre shots here, and now I'm trying to get up and down here for my birdie. This ball landed a lot stickier than I thought it would, but I have like two, two and a half feet left here. So I just walked in and knocked that one with my iron. And this was a lot of fun. I, I really do actually kind of want to turn this into a series. Obviously, I'm going to keep the golf vlogs as I have kept them. and Because I do want that to be the cornerstone of this channel. But this is really fun. And it really puts a lot of pressure on my short game. Because you expect to... Um, be able to make birdies from 5,300 yards, which is how far I'm playing from. And obviously, since they're like 320 yards, I can get there with my irons typically, but it's going to be hard to hit a lot of greens on one shot because you're 300 yards out. So you're going to have a lot of shots like this around the green where you really need to get up and down because that's the only way you're going to take advantage and score well. So this is great for my game, and I really hope you guys enjoy this because I would definitely love to be putting out more videos like this. I think it'd be a lot of fun. And yeah, that chip, I miscalculated there. I landed it on this little slope and it kicked dead right. And I thought it would kick a little more forward. So I have about eight or nine feet here to open with three straight birdies, which I think is a pretty solid opening. And just not a very good putt, pretty weak, and left that one low and right. So a pretty disappointing four there. Now in the hole four, two under. And have 329 yards left, and I'm gonna hit a one iron and sound up. And I'm really starting to hit it great. It's gr it's really nice to see the payoff of a lot of the hard work I've been putting in. I'm I'm starting to feel very comfortable with my one iron, especially. It's starting to feel like a pretty deadly club. The big thing we're still trying to work on is making my misses tighter and tighter and tighter. I still do have the foul ball every now and then that really gets me into trouble but it's a process and I'm really liking the way my game has been the last few months check out this mud ball by the way you can actually see the ball slide to the right on that chip and it it rained like 22 and a half inches yesterday so the course was soaked and yeah it just goes to show you know when you have a mud ball I guess the tip I can put in here Whichever side of the ball the mud is, the ball will go the opposite. So if you have mud on the right side of the ball, play for it to shoot to the left and vice versa. You can see me shaking the water off the um, ball because there was standing water in the cups. But that's a really cool little tip I've learned. And if it's 
if the if the mud's on the top or the bottom, you kind of just got to pray, <laughs> to be honest with you. In fact, when you see tour pros, they kind of you, there's actually a little compilation on YouTube. If you look up PGA Tour mud ball, you'll see what I'm talking about, where they just kind of like go, oh man, mud ball when it's in the middle of the air. That's those are the instances where the mud's directly on the bottom of the ball, where they it's completely hidden by the where the ball is lying on the ground. So it's you know you can't control it all the time, but um, if it's to the right, the ball is going to slide to the left. If it's to the left, the ball is going to slide to the right. And so not the best wedge shot here. Again, kind of blooded out to the right and have about 25 feet here left. Made a pretty good stroke, just overread it a bit. And another great thing I really love about this is it, this gets you into an aggressive attack mindset. It really makes you annoyed that you're only a couple under par. And that's a tremendous way to think on the golf course because any time you start playing defensive is when I find, at least personally, that's when I start to hit bad shots. And when I'm playing aggressive, when I'm not really thinking about trying to preserve my score, but trying to better my score, I've always played better. In fact, um, the one round I did shoot under 70 in that two and a half year stretch, I shot a 68. I distinctly remember my mindset that entire round was I'm trying to get further and further under par. And it worked amazingly. And for those of you that are curious, um, I'm sure you can look it up in the archives, actually, my scores. If you go to the polar rankings and then look, type in like 2014 or 2015, I, I, I think my scores, I had like 37 scores on there in those two years. And I think 35 of them were between 70 and 77. <laughs> so it gives you an idea of kind of where I shot. And so another really muddy ball there, but kicked that one in. And so I made another birdie. So I'm honestly playing pretty good. It is the yellows, I mean the red tees, but I actually think four under after six is pretty solid. So sound up. This was probably my best shot of the day. I hit it so good I actually flew it over the green. This was right at the pin, and it landed on the back edge and kind of kicked over. You'll see where I am in a few seconds here. But that was a. Re I remember making that swing and just thinking that was the best swing I've made in a long time. And I have a really tough shot here, actually. There's um, the pin's only like seven or eight feet on the green, so I have to really hit a flop shot. This was a kind of a weird lie, but you know my my game's getting a little better. I hit an awesome shot here, and so I didn't see this. I didn't quite see it, but this went in, and. <laughs> So I was pretty excited about that. That got me to six under. I definitely wish I would have had the camera behind the hole. That would have been cool to see. But so yeah, six under through seven holes, which is awesome. And now I have a two iron here. Have to play, try to play a bit of a cut around these trees. And just pulled it a bit. So a little bit off. And I did hit two iron, thankfully, because I did know that if I went left, which was a possibility. I would have been in huge trouble with a one iron in those trees. But because I hit a two iron, I'm a little short and still in pretty good shape. And this was another pretty tough shot, actually. The pin was in the front left part of the screen. And so I had to make sure I flew it far enough to get it to roll onto the green. And another pretty good chip shot, a little bit to the right of the flag, but it scooted up. And this time I wanted to make sure I could see the ball and where, where it ended up. So I have about six or seven feet here. And I gotta say, do it, playing these playing from way up has definitely, as I said before, helped tighten up my short game. In fact, I think it's the number one thing you can do for your short game. So play a few tees up if you want to get get better on the course. I think you guys might be very pleasantly surprised at how much more you enjoy the game and how much better you get overall. And so that one stung. I thought that was in, <laughs> and uh, so that was a tough one to take. But now in a hole nine, and we're trying to get in here at a, a 29. Uh, 154 yards with a 46 degree wedge. The, I, the, there was no flag stick on this green. I had to totally guess where this, this hole was. So what I decided to do is hit it right in the middle of the green and just hope the hole was close by. And I hit it right in, like dead center of the green. So I was like, all right, well, we'll see where the flag is. And a little thing here, you'll see me back off and take a look at the divot. This is a great way to check club path. And so in that case, my club path was slightly negative, which means it was slightly to the left, and that's what we wanted to see because it produces a little cut. And you can see the backspin there, and the ball, the 
hole happened to be almost dead center of the green. So I have about a seven or eight footer here to shoot a 29. I've really been feeling pretty good. So I'm just trying to make a good stroke and trust it. And made the stroke I wanted and just tailed off to the right. And that was just, I couldn't believe it tailed off to the right. But I'll knock that one in for a 30. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.